Meet the F-47 NGAD, named in honor of Donald Trump. Hold on to your ejection seats, the biggest reveal since the F-117's midnight debut just roared out of the Oval Office. At exactly 10.03 a.m. on 21st March 2025, a grinning and newly re-elected President Donald Trump announced that Boeing, not Lockheed, had clinched a 20-plus billion dollar contract to build the world's first sixth-generation crewed fighter, now officially christened F-47, a sly nod to him being the 47th U.S. president. Reporters gasped, markets fluttered, and social media meme smiths grabbed their gift tools faster than a sidewinder off the rail. In one show-stopping sentence, Trump promised a stealth jet so advanced it makes the F-22 look like a rotary phone. Outside, photographers caught an artist's rendering of a knife-edged delta shadow streaking across a digital desert queue, the dramatic soundtrack. So let's start the video. What on earth is NGAD and why does the F-47 sit on its throne? Picture the U.S. Air Force opening a giant marble portal above the Pacific and watching a stealthy arrowhead glide through that next-generation air dominance NGAD. It isn't just a new jet, but a family of systems in which the F-47 plays Tony Stark-level quarterback. Official planning documents released after Boeing's contract award describe a core fleet of roughly 185 crewed fighters guiding 1,000-plus collaborative combat aircraft drones and tapping space-based ISR nodes for real-time targeting. The vision is to retire the F-22 in the early to mid-2030s and replace one-plane versus one-plane dogfights with swarming, data-driven air warfare. Slide decks show the F-47 as a tailless, diamond-wing mothership with a single-piece bubble canopy, Top Gun swagger on a Tron airframe. General Dave Alvin's favorite soundbite sums it up. Two humans, eight drones, one button push to rule the battle space. In other words, if today's fighters are chess knights, NGAD wants a 4D chess queen that moves anywhere, calls in help, and flips the board if needed. Specs so sizzling they need their own fire extinguisher. When the Air Force finally released a one-page infographic in May 2025, aviation forums practically melted. Combat radius? 1,000 plus nautical miles. Top end speed? North of Mach 2. Radar cross-section? About 20% smaller than the F-35 in Kuban tests. Analysts immediately map that radius onto the Pacific and realize the jet can sprint from Guam to the Taiwan Strait without tank or drag turning geography on its head. Payload rumors followed. 10 internal AIM-260 JATM missiles in a ventral bay, plus space for miniature cruise weapons riding on conformal smart skins. Inside the cockpit, pilots won't see dials or MFDs. They'll slip on a visor that floats a 360-degree blended reality bubble of targets, drones, satellites, and even cyber threats. One Alvin quip, the goal is that radar operators drink stronger coffee because the F-47 signature is measured in coffee beans, not square meters. Whether that's hype or hard math, the takeaway is simple. This bird was designed to enter a missile engagement zone, fire first, and ghost away before enemy radars finish booting up. Propulsion, the espresso shot heart of the beast. Great airframes die without great engines, so Engershit's beating heart is the next generation adaptive propulsion NGAP program. Two gladiators face off in the test stands. GE's XA-102 and Pratt & Whitney's XA-103. Both use a three-stream architecture that can pinch or pour airflow on demand. Think of a turbofan with a dimmer switch. GE's recent design review boasted 20% more thrust than today's F-135, while sipping 25% less fuel during cruise, thanks to model-based digital engineering. Pratt counters that its XA-103 can rewrote bypass air for laser weapon cooling and still hit Mach 2 dash numbers, giving the jet the power margin to fry missiles on the way in. The engines also act as flying generators. NGAD's electrical hotel load for sensors and jammers is expected to double that of an F-35 so engineers tap waste heat and convert it into megawatts for onboard systems, and pilot jokes claim 
for keeping lattes toasty on trans-Pacific sorties. Bottom line, adaptive engines promise fighter jet espresso stronger, hotter, but without the fuel burn jitters. Drone wingmen, the flying hype men you actually want around. Fast forward to the 2025 Paris Air Show, where the static line looked like a sci-fi cosplay contest. Anduril's fury strolled in with serrated inlets and a shark tooth grin, promising 1,000 mile range and modular bays for jammers or bombs. General Atomics unveiled the YFQ-42A, a stealth dart designed to haul sensors or missiles at F-35 speeds. Boeing's MQ-28 Ghostbat flexed by running an AI-directed mock intercept from an Australian wedge tail. Two drones bracketed a target 50 miles out while the human crew merely watched. Under USAF concepts, each F-47 will marshal five or six wingmen. One may spoof enemy radars, another extend the sensor bubble, a third lug extra JATMs, and a fourth is just brave enough to poke the SAM bear first. Command happens via a holographic touchscreen pilots, tap, drag, and drop waypoints like an airborne StarCraft match, except the Zerg rush involves live missiles. Reuters quipped that drone manufacturers are now auditioning for a Broadway show because when NGAD finally opens, every unmanned actor wants a leading role. How we got here, a timeline worthy of a binge watch. 2014 to 16, DARPA's Air Dominance Initiative seeds the idea of a penetrating counter air fighter. 2019, both Boeing and Lockheed quietly fly X-plane demonstrators. Boeing's design reportedly the first tailless Delta to Super Cruise. 2023, Northrop Grumman bows out, budgets wobble, and the Pentagon pauses for breath. July 2024. After a cost-benefit autopsy, Secretary of the Air Force Frank Kendall calls Enyad an inescapable imperative and reignites the contest. 21st March to 2025, Trump's Oval Office mic drop, Boeing wins. Jet is dubbed F-47. 15th April 2025, AFRL blog confirms early production tooling in St. Louis citing digital twin workflows that shrink cycle time by 30%. If this were Netflix, we'd already be greenlit for season two. Money talk. When your wallet goes supersonic congressional line items for fiscal year, 2025 show $2.75 billion to keep the F-47 design sprinting and $557 million for the Loyal Wingman drone ecosystem, just one slice of a planned $28.5 billion five-year block. GAO scorekeepers warn life cycle costs could edge toward $150 billion once spares, bases, and pilot conversion courses hit the ledger. Boeing's EMD ceiling alone tops $20 billion, and analysts joke the invoice needs its own Pentagon zip code. Proponents counter that every F-47 replaces two aging F-22s in both range and magazine depth, so cost per effect actually drops. Missouri and Connecticut lawmakers are already tweeting job creation numbers, while deficit hawks gripe that NGAD's annual spend will eclipse NASA's entire crewed spaceflight budget by 2028. Expect lively Hill hearings and at least one viral meme featuring a gold-plated fighter jet, industrial revival, Boeing's redemption arc, and Pratt's power play. Boeing Defense, still nursing its 737 MAX and KC-46 bruises, treats NGAD like Rocky's last round comeback. In St. Louis, the dormant F-15 line is morphing into an additive manufacturing stealth shop, churning 3D printed titanium ribs and laser cured resin skins. Down in Huntsville, coders are teaching MQ-28 ghost bats to interpret tap-to-target commands in under 200 milliseconds. On the power plant front, Pratt & Whitney's East Hartford campus hums with XA-103 core tests. Winning production could sustain 11,000 Connecticut jobs over a decade, edging GE's XA-102 bid by sheer political muscle. Tier 2 firms from Arizona, Ceramic Matrix, to Alabama RF Apertures smell a mini-renaissance. One supply chain guru calls it the arsenal of autonomy factory floors, where robotic riveters pirouette under soft blue LEDs and machinists wear AR goggles that overlay jig tolerances in real time. Steel toe Broadway indeed. Storm clouds. Why this isn't a guaranteed Hollywood ending. 
History whispers caution. Every next-gen fighter since the F-4 has devoured more dollars in time than promised. Early lab tests already show certain stealth coatings blistering after 1,200 hours of Pacific salt spray, while AI target classifiers mistake pelicans for hostile UCAVs in three of 50 sorties. Adaptive engines juggle triple stream airflow at Mach 2, but if one variable bypass valve sticks, the whole core runs hot. Meanwhile, the Navy's FA-20 is chasing similar tech for carrier decks, and Capitol Hill knows there's only so much as stealth pie to go around. Pentagon bean counters warn that a six-month slip in flight test tempo could snowball into four to six billion dollars in concurrency penalties. Skeptics quip that adaptive cycle may describe the funding loop, not the engine. Global chessboard, the J-36 waits in the wings. Across the Pacific, Chengdu's J-36 Trije, a diamond wing leviathan dubbed the B-2 in skinny jeans, logged its second test flight in June 2025. Satellite snaps show side-by-side -side seating, hinting at an onboard drone command module. Chinese bloggers brag that the J-36 will pair with GJ-11 Stealth UCAVs for their own manned-unmanned -manned swarms. U.S. strategists aren't ringing alarm bells in public, but NGAD funding timelines sped up exactly two weeks after Beijing's first flight video leaked. At the Paris Air Show, defense wonks whispered Sky Race 2.0, while U.S. delegates posed next to a life-size F-47 mock-up wearing a cheeky, some assembly required sign. Add Europe's GSCAP program and Japan's rumored interest in an exportable GAD derivative, and the next decade's script is set. F-47 vs. J-36 winner takes altitude data and maybe the Indo-Pacific. And that's a wrap on the sky-dominating, radar-dodging, drone-commanding legend that is the F-47. If this video 6th gen stealth beast blew your mind, or at least made you want to fly a holographic cockpit, hit that, like, subscribe button, like it's a missile lock.